Hello and welcome to the Thursday, December 7th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jan today wrote a quick diary about an interesting new RFC that was just released last week, RFC 9511, and it deals with a problem that I've mentioned a few times, and uh, we have uh, data for on the Internet Storm Center website, and that's researchers scanning the internet. I think we have now something like 30 groups that we are tracking based on our data because they often show up as some of the top attackers. And the problem, of course, is that these researchers themselves create quite a bit of sort of background noise. And it's often important to figure out if a particular scan that you're seeing in your network is just some researchers. So you may just want to block them or something more malicious or uh, maybe even some some false positives or such. Well, uh, RFC 9511 suggests that a web server on the IP address doing the probing is providing essentially a little file in the well-known directory called probing.txt that provides additional information about the origin of these scans. It would be interesting to see if this uh, takes off. There is, of course, a risk that bad guys will... Uh, claim that they're researchers, but they already do that to some extent. There is nothing to prevent an attacker from just setting up a web page on a scanning IP address claiming that this is part of a research organization. I think where this will really help is it will give you a little bit more background as to who is actually behind the scan. And then you can check that particular organization's web page, for example, to corroborate the information that is provided via that probing.txt file. Interesting approach. We'll see if it takes off. Uh, but I would suggest if you're planning to scan the internet for something, well, uh, check if someone is already doing that and uh, just share data with them. That's probably what you really should do. In some cases, we have seen about 30% or so of the incoming scans being originated uh, by these uh, researchers and companies, of course, uh, that basically scan in it to catalog vulnerable systems. And remember on Monday, I talked about the Saria hacktivist group and how they were sort of branching out in various different vulnerabilities, including looking for systems running ML Flow, the machine learning framework management system. Well, it turns out that today we actually got an update for ML Flow fixing three different vulnerabilities. For one of these vulnerabilities, we actually have some details that were released on December 1st, so last Friday, just as sort of some of these scans happened. And that vulnerability is not sort of trivial to exploit. It's a cross-site request forgery vulnerability would actually require an administrator to visit a website that was set up by the attacker, but certainly not off the question. And uh, maybe one of the reasons why we do see some uh, scanning for ML flow. So definitely do apply the patch. It has been made available today. And the severity of the two other vulnerabilities being addressed in this update is not clear. There's also no CVE number mentioned as part of the update notes, really just of a little one-liner. And for anybody listening who has to deal with AWS cloud environments and, uh, well, who doesn't uh, these days, there's an interesting blog post by Red Canary talking a little bit about the secure token service in AWS or STS. It's used to create these short-term credentials and, well, of course, can also be abused by an adversary if they have access to it. There's not really a vulnerability in the service. It's really just like if someone gets access to your passwords, they can use them. Same if they can get access to the secure token service or any tokens generated by it. I think the main lesson from this blog post is to be aware that it can be abused and has been abused, but also to just monitor really what's happening with your tokens. And as always, of course, try as best you can to restrict what access these tokens provide. 
And for those of you running Atlassian products, well, yet again, it's update time. There are three remote code execution vulnerabilities that were addressed in this update. One is a vulnerability in Atlassian component, companion app for Mac OS, a vulnerability in assets discovery, and then a vulnerability in Confluence data center and Confluence server. Probably the most severe here is the one in asset discovery. That's an additional add-on that you download via the Atlassian Marketplace. So you may not have that installed. CVSS score for this is 9.8. And then I almost forgot it's holiday hack challenge time has been opened up today. So take a look and well, have fun with it. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.